Adwitiya 200 Mbps speed deka ke. Sri Lanka ve vegavat masaha pulul tama home broadband sambandh tave vana. SLT Mobitel deshe fiber bala vege opat adam atvidinna. Hari masudui. Tonight on First at Nine this Wednesday, the 12th of July, 2023. Presidential outrage. President Ranil Wickremesinghe condemns the burning of the Holy Quran in Sweden. What we are asking the human rights in Geneva is why are you silent? He calls on the UNHRC to protect the rights to freedom of worship. If you are going to excuse this act on the basis of freedom of expression, then basically you have to rewrite history about Adolf Hitler who burnt all the books and many of the Jewish cathedrals and make him a Nobel Prize winner. So one of the two. Protect EPF. Tax experts are of the view that the EPF is responsible in protecting the interests of its beneficiaries. Important imports. The government is set to ease import restrictions on 300 or more essential items next week, says the State Minister of Finance. Alliance Finance Mitru Run Nai Sevaave Run Pound Cutter Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Daha Saka Ehla Atti Karma Obe Vishwa Se Dino Sinsudain Then Langam Ethi Pharmacy Inla Baga The Hacker Adha Verna First at Nine Live from Studio 24 in Colombo Good evening and a warm welcome to you. I'm Jonathan Benedict and welcome to today's edition of the Other Than Anna's English News First at Nine. Let me take you to your top story. While condemning the act of burning the Quran by an Iraqi outside the central mosque in the Swedish capital of Stockholm, President Ranil Wickremesinghe questioned why the United Nations Human Rights Council has remained silent on the matter. Addressing the ceremony that declared open the newly constructed court complex in Ratnapura, the president said that he has ordered the foreign ministry to support the motion by Pakistan filed at the UNHRC condemning this act. Further, the president termed this act as a violation of freedom of worship, akin to a violation of freedom of expression. The newly constructed court complex in Ratnapura was declared open yesterday by President Ranil Vikrama Singha. It was the end of the last month, a person called Solvan Momita. Uh, asked for permission to go in front of the Turkish embassy in Sweden to burn a Koran. The police refused permission. The Supreme Administrative Court gave permission claiming it's a right of expression. Police acted on the basis it's on the right of worship. The Supreme Administrative Court said it is the right of expression. After the burning took place, there was a big outcry. Sweden got pressure from all the countries. We all had to deploy it. We all denounced it. So, but what did Sweden do? Sweden, of course, said the burning of a holy text is an offensive and disrespectful act and a clear provocation. But then they said constitutionally protected right of freedom and speech assembly expression has to be safeguarded. Now, on one hand, we are saying it's a freedom of worship that has been violated, and they say, no, these are freedom of expression, it should be safeguarded. As reactions came from government, some of the Western governments said this freedom of expression. It comes under, they, while they deplored that, they brought it under freedom of expression. So as a result, Pakistan has not now gone before the Geneva for the Human Rights Council and moved a motion that this is a violation of the international human rights law that is being taken up on the 13th, the Thursday, in Geneva. Now, this is the question that is arising. We all treat this as a violation of the freedom of worship. But there is an attempt to bring this under freedom of expression. You can't bring everything under the freedom of expression. There has to be a limitation. So all of us regard this as an attack on religion. But for some of the Western countries, it's one of expression. Because they are trying to expand the concept of expression to cover disorder. And as a result, they, they feel that their values, the Western value system has to be imposed. But we are asking the human rights in Geneva is, why are you silent? Why hasn't the commissioner made a statement? Why are you going to wait for a vote? 
if you are going to excuse this act on the basis of freedom of expression, then basically you have to rewrite history about Adolf Hitler, who burnt all the books and many of the Jewish cathedrals and make him a Nobel Prize winner. So one of the two. Let's look at what is going to take place on Thursday. If the Human Rights Council gives in to pressure and says this is a freedom of expression, then there will be a total break between most of us in the South and the Western value system. On the other hand, if they say this is a violation of freedom of worship, then they must define the limit of freedom of expression. This is a big test. Are the Human Rights Council going to accept the freedom of worship and put limitations on the freedom of expression? Are they not going to do it? Nevertheless, this is the beginning, I think, of us trying to get our own values, the values of the Global South, into the Human Rights Council where it has to be respected. This was a very important issue, and since I have instructed the foreign ministry to go ahead and first to oppose it in Geneva, any attempt by the West to change it, to support the Pakistani resolution. Chairman of the Sectoral Oversight Committee on National Economic and Physical Plans, Mahindananda Alutkamage, said that only 31,000 persons who hold income tax files pay their taxes out of 500,000 personal income tax files, file holders in Sri Lanka. The chairman said that the committee will hold discussions with Sri Lanka Customs, the Excise Department, as well as the Inland Revenue Department with regards to increasing revenue generated by the government. A meeting of the Sectoral Oversight Committee on National Economic and Physical Plans was held recently under the patronage of its chairman Mahindananda Alutgamage. Members of the committee Eran Vikramaratna and Sudat Manjula as well as the Inland Revenue Commissioner General were also present at the meeting of the committee. During the meeting, it was revealed that of the 500,000 citizens who have tax files in Sri Lanka, only 31,000 are paying tax. The chairman of the committee said that there are 105,000 registered limited companies in the country, but 82% of the tax revenue is received from only 382 companies. He also emphasized on the importance of maintaining the foreign exchange reserves of the country, controlling inflation, as well as positioning the government's income to be in optimal condition by the time of the second review of the IMF in December. The chairman also said that his committee will hold regular discussions with Sri Lanka Customs, the Excise Department and the Inland Revenue Department to provide necessary facilities in order to pave the way to increase the state revenue. While discussing the government's domestic debt restructuring proposal, tax expert N. R. Gajendran said that it is the duty of the Employee Provident Fund officials to choose whether to adhere to the domestic debt restructuring proposals by the government or go for the alternative of paying a 30% tax. In our new segment, Debt Treatment, What's Next? Gajendra highlighted the incongruency of the EPF to pay an income tax to the Inland Revenue Department. While the EPF has not specifically mentioned it in the Act, the Inland Revenue Act has. The consultant left it up to the officials to choose to pay this income tax either from the EPF gross income or the net income stream. One of the questions which has been highly debated is the taxability of EPF. When the EPF Act 1958 was enacted, there was an exemption given in the EPF Act itself, exemption from income tax under Section 43 of the EPF Act. Following this exemption, when uh, Inland Revenue Act 28 of 79 was enacted, there was an exemption automatically given in the Inland Revenue Act. But for some reason or other, in 1989, this exemption was removed in the Inland Revenue Act. In spite of the fact it was removed in the Inland Revenue Act, the exemption continued to be there in the EPF Act and that exemption is still available. So under the EPF Act 15 of 1958, the income tax exemption still remains. So technically, EPF will be entitled for the exemption. But after 1989, what happened was because of the removal of the exemption in the Inland Revenue Act, EPF didn't look at the EPF Act and they maybe they have been told to pay the tax. They started paying the tax on interest income. Under the old act, that is 28 of 79 of the 2000 act, and also 10 of 2006, on interest income, there was no deductions allowed for expenses incurred in producing the interest income. So the gross amount was taxed, and uh, currently the rate is 14%. This practice was continued in the new act, Inland Revenue Act 24 of 2017, but unlike in the previous Inland Revenue Act, the Inland Revenue Act 24 of 2017 allows deductions and outgoings against on investment income. 
amount interest income. So even if EPF is liable to income tax, uh, there can there should be deductions allowed in computing statutory taxable income for tax purposes. So it need not be on gross tax, but it can be on the net profit. This matter has to be considered because the option given for the EPF, if you don't comply with the first option, you have to pay tax at 30%. And in that event, if it is there to pay the tax on the basis it's liable, it can choose to pay in the net income and not on the gross income. So this matter is for the EPF authorities to consider in safeguarding the interest of the employees. State Minister of Finance Shehan Semasinger said that beneficiaries of the Aswasama program who have not appealed or been the subject of a complaint will receive their allowances under the program from this month. He added that allowances for those who are crippled handicapped, kidney patients and the elderly in low-income families will continue without any changes until a new system is in place. Mitek Virodata, Saha, Biachana, Labila, Nati, Teri Patula, in a Sieludena, Sandha, May, Marse, Tula, Palaveni, Gavima, Karanapi, Katitukar. Then at a Samurti Pratilaba, Laban, Paul Lake Kavalin, Paul Lake Kadolos Laksha, Asuda, Satsia, Hatali Satak, Aswasuma Pratilaba, Sandha, Ilum Kalatin. In Teri Patula, no Atalaksha, Suhatta, Saisia, Panas, Tunaka Praman. Abadi the Dimanava, then at a Labana, Putgale. Wahugadu Rogi, Dimanava, then at a Labana, Putgale and Wagema. Adua, I am Labi, Vadihiti, Dimanava, Labana, Putgale and Pilipando, Api, Janati, but to my Kasaka Chakara, Eanuapi, Tindukara, Alut, Kramaway, the Sakaskarna Tik, then at a Kriatmaka, Lakeane, Kisundu Venasak Natua, the Aka Reta, Makriatmakarana, Janati, but to my Visin, Upadislabadi Latin. Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri is scheduled to attend the 30th ASEAN Regional Forum Ministerial Meeting on the 14th of this month. Sri Lanka has been a member of the ASEAN Regional Forum since 2007. The forum-themed ASEAN Matters Epicentrum of Growth, hosted by Indonesia, aims to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the forum while exchanging views on confidence-building measures and cultivating preventative diplomacy in addressing the current and regional global challenges. As such, the foreign minister is expected to meet several counterparts for bilateral discussions during his stay in Indonesia. In other news, the Ba Association of Sri Lanka says that there is a growing trend of parliamentarians exploiting parliamentary privileges. In a press release, the BASL raised concerns about parliamentarians exploiting parliamentary privileges by making statements in the House for matters which are under deliberation by the judiciary or matters yet to be decided. The BASL placed strong emphasis on the recent statement made by parliamentarian Sarat Virasekara on the 7th of July, stating that it is an unfounded brazen attack on the judiciary as well as the social fabric of Sri Lanka. As such, the association noted the importance of allowing the judiciary to operate independently, free from external pressures, threats, or any kind of interference in order to ensure the existence of a vibrant democracy. Stating that any interference in the judicial process sets a, dis a dangerous precedent, which must be strongly condemned, the BASL urged the government and the opposition to respect and observe the independence of the judiciary. There will be more news after this short break. Stay tuned. Goda Mata Pirali Karana Bala Pulu Ankarya Mahindra Juvo Demo Vithin Vedama Godai Goda Mata Mai Swaraj Tractor Demo Vithin Ah, Ma Pegadarat Apikometras Tamai Madili Rasakin Nut Metalu E Pramukya Apikometras Sepanindata Sepamitta Welcome back. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Siambalapitiya today announced that the government will take measures to ease import restrictions on 300 more essential items. The minister tweeted that the relaxation of these items are expected to come into effect as early as next week. Due to the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, the then government imposed a ban on several items as part of its prolonged rigid import restrictions. The ban on imports continued due to the subsequent economic crisis until as recently as November 2022, when the current government proceeded to relax these restrictions in phases. 
This also comes in the wake of an undertaking the current government placed with the European Union to present a plan by June of this year to lift import restrictions currently prevalent in the country. The government last issued a Gazette notification lifting the import ban on over 240 products last month. The Committee on Public Enterprises discovered that the online auctioning system for coconut harvests introduced with the aim of demolishing the monopoly mafia has been opposed and obstructed because of the agenda of the brokers. During the COPE session, the chairman of the Coconut Development Authority, Roshan Pereira, emphasized that the reluctance was noted as a result of their preference to the practical or offline procedure. <laughs> register <laughs> राज्य मुदल आर मुदल योद्धों ला निर्देश कर में कर लती है ना में कि इलाके वर्ष अन्य कर डिवेलप करने वाले बैरी नांग किया ना आपी निम्नों मिले को कोलम में मोर्टुवे कैंपस सिर्फ मां कर ला देना काउरे बैरी का काउरा रीनो है ना में एका मामा मामा वकीम बार करना मेरा जात के विश्वविद्यालय मैं तुम्हें करापु प्रकाशे किए ना मैं सोर्स कोड देगा कि कौन दीला ने ऑरिजिनल प्रोग्राम में कहते मेरे को लोग ना नया किए ने का अतर मेरे का आप इतने दीला दिनों सोर्स कोड सीखा तो आप इतने नया सर्वर का इतने सर्वर के लिए गुल्लो इंस्टॉल कर ला दूँ ना हम तो मैं इतने सोर्स कोड सीखा पावे तारा उगारो कैमरे दिन हैं मेरे का आराम भी इधर ला आराम मकाद दो मस्का डेट के नियन्नो आगे तमाह मेरे तारा उगारो इधर इधर ला मां कैमरे तूने नहीं तक आता हो अभी तारा उगारन टोने भी दिन है राज्य आते नहीं कर यहाँ पे लेकर तुम्हारे दादी का डाइट तीन दुगने बैठे अभी लेकर तुम्हारे क्यों मे खाता है ना वो आमे का आंटे में किल्ला आंटे मम्मे का आंटे लगा ना वो आमे तो नहीं लहात रहते ना मैं इस करन ये 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 माफिया वो काटन ना मेरी हो जाना अबे अधिकारी इतने साले पिर जाके वो मेरे का पैसा मेरे का बैग 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 ही है मेरे का देखो लो तुमको ले का तू इलाज करने वाला Taking a look at how stocks performed today, the Colombo boss ended higher today, aided by gains in financial stocks. The Colombo Stock Exchange All Share Index closed up 1.69% at 10,489.98 points, gaining for an eighth straight session. LOLC Holdings PLC and LOLC Finance PLC were the top gainers on the CSE's All Share, rising 7.18% and 5% respectively. Trading volume on the CSE All Share Index rose to 150.2 million shares from 131.5 million shares in the previous session. The equity market's turnover rose to 3.06 billion rupees from 2.67 billion rupees in the previous session. The capital goods sector was the top contributor to market turnover, while the food, beverage and tobacco sector was the second highest contributor. Foreign investors were net sellers, offloading stocks worth 136.8 million rupees, while domestic investors were net buyers, purchasing shares worth 2.95 billion rupees. Let's now take a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day.
Oil prices stayed fluid today as the market expects the U.S. inflation data to be published later on in the day, which may affect the global demand. This is rumored to further aggravate the price hike expected with a supply cut by Saudi Arabia and Russia. Analysts say that a supply deficit due to, the global, due to global economic activity is expected. However, market participants are choosing to wait it out till U.S. inflation statistics can determine if price re pressures are still easing. This will no doubt prove, provide insights on the interest rate outlook. Brent futures edged down one cent to $79.39 a barrel from yesterday's close at $79.40. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude meanwhile grew eight cents to $74.91 a barrel from yesterday's close at $74.83. The U.S. dollar dropped to a two-month low against a basket of other currencies a day after several Federal Reserve officials signaled that the U.S. Central Bank was near the end of its tightening cycle. Analysts confirmed that a weaker dollar makes crude cheaper for holders of other currencies. Markets are awaiting U.S. inflation data today for clues on the interest rate outlook. Higher rates can slow economic growth and reduce oil demand. Meanwhile, the Energy Information Administration expects the oil market to stay tight in the second half of 2023, citing strong demand from China and developing countries combined with supply cuts from leading producers. New forecasts from the EIA are expected this week. That's all the news I have for you this evening. Do join us again. Do join us again time on Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Adhaderana. For more news, or visit www.adhaderana.lk. For now, I'm Jonathan Benedict, wishing you a good night and a blessed Thursday ahead. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderana.lk.